Welcome to November at the Scientific American Blog Network, a month of slaughtered tigers, superstorms, and horrifying ways to die. On Extinction Countdown this month, John Platt reminds us of a story of a man who slaughtered and ate the very last Indochine tiger in China. Now, Indochine tigers are extremely rare. They are now extinct in China, but they exist in small numbers in other countries. Apparently, the person who slaughtered and ate this tiger uh, claimed self-defense, but he is now spending 12 years in jail for the crime. This month, Alex Wilde profiled the 13 most horrifying ways to die if you're an arthropod. He coupled this with his own photographs for a horrible yet awesome post. How about getting your head taken off by a direct injection of Dracula ant venom? Your guts impaled on a spiky ant teeth? Your brain being invaded by a zombie fungus that directs you to an ideal spot for your parasite to release spores? Your innards are suddenly sucked out by a predatory maggot? You're pregnant with a parasitic worm that kills you when it breaks out by force? Your body is slowly weakened and destroyed by wasp grubs feeding on your insides? Typhoon Haiyan was a massive storm that devastated the Philippines this month. But how massive was it, and was it really a record storm? Well, Mark Fischetti sets the record straight on his blog this month. Everyone knows about Typhoon Haiyan, which destroyed the Philippines. But a lot of the stories that came out were unclear about two basic questions about storms. First was the strength of the storm. Haiyan was, in fact, the strongest typhoon, cyclone, hurricane, all the same thing to make landfall. Strength is the sustained wind speeds, which were 190 to 195 miles an hour at landfall, which makes high end the strongest storm to ever strike land. The second question is a little more complicated as to a storm surge. Strong sur storms can have high surges or low surges, and there are a number of factors that drive that outcome. So one is the sustained wind speeds over the ocean, how long the winds are strong before the storm reaches land, which allows the surge to build. Another factor is how fast the storm is moving across the water, which can push that storm surge or not. Um, another factor are high tides, whether the storm reaches land during low or high tides. So we've got a low tide plus a storm surge, or a high tide plus the same storm surge makes for a higher surge. And finally, the shape of the ocean floor is a big factor. So if the ocean floor builds gradually, up towards the coastline, then the surge can really build. But if there are sharp drops in the ocean floor, that can disrupt the ability of the surge to mount. So you see, November was horrifying. Let's hope there's some happy stories in December. I don't know, bunnies, kittens, sunny days? I guess we'll see. I'll see you next month.